untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today I was taking a look at a Junt Reanimator deck titled The Return, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, the best way to support the channel. And today's deck is built around Cardur's Vicious Return, a 4 mana saga that on the first chapter lets us sacrifice a creature, and if we do, we deal 3 damage to any target. On the second chapter, each player discards a card, which is a useful way of discarding one of our expensive creatures, to then reanimate with the third and final chapter, which returns a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield. It gets a plus one plus one counter, and it also gains haste until our next turn, so it can attack right away. Then we've got additional reanimation effects with 4 copies of a return upon the tide, which has foretell, so we can pay 2 mana on turn 2 to exile it and then cast it for 4 mana later to reanimate one of our creatures. And we also have a one-off unbreakable bond which reanimates a creature for 5 mana and also puts a lifelink counter on it. And lifelink is especially nice on an 11-11 trampling titanothorax, which we can also cycle for 1 and a green, putting a trample counter on a creature we control. So that's an easy way of discarding our titanothorax if we don't have a card or vicious return to discard it instead. And then we've got a whole host of one-off creatures to potentially reanimate, and the reason for all those one-offs is that we're playing the full playset of Fierce Empath, a 3-mana 1-1 elf that when it enters battlefield lets us search our library for a creature card with mana value 6 or greater, reveal it and put it into our hand. So Fierce Empath is perfect alongside our Cardor's Vicious Return, as we can play turn 3 Fierce Empath, search up any creature that we want to reanimate, and then on turn 4 play the Return, can even sacrifice the Empath, dealing 3 damage to an opposing creature to use it as removal, and then on the second chapter we'll discard whichever creature we searched up, and on the third chapter reanimate it. And the creatures to reanimate include Burning Rune Demon, which is also very feasible to just hard cast for 6 mana as a 6 6 flying demon berserker. When it enters the battlefield, we search our library for exactly two cards not named to Burning Rune Demon that have different names, and then our opponent chooses one of them to put into our graveyard, and one of them goes into our hand. So that's also the reason for the one off Unbreakable Bond. In case we want to get both the Return Upon the Tide and Unbreakable Bond, we'll get at least one of the 5 mana reanimation effects. And then we also have a Massacre Worm as a sweeper effect, giving all opposing creatures minus two, minus two until end of turn when it enters the battlefield. And whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, that player also loses two life. We've got Kogla, the Titan Ape, as a 7-6 legendary creature. When it enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature we don't control. And when Kogla attacks, we can destroy an artifact or enchantment defending player controls. So especially if we can give Kogla haste with the third chapter from Vicious Return, we can make sure to take out any artifacts or enchantments from the opponent. And then we've got Belladros Witherbloom, the 7 mana 4 4 legendary Elder Dragon with flying, which at the beginning of each upkeep, including the opponent's upkeep, generates a 1 1 pest token that when it dies gains 1 life, and we can also pay 10 life to untap all lands we control. And then we've got a 1 of Bookworm, 8 mana 7 7 a Trampling Worm, that when enters the battlefield gains 3 life and draws a card, and we can also put it back in our library from our graveyard. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we've got some additional cheap creatures to enable our Carder's Vicious Return to potentially sacrifice a creature to the first chapter. And Gilded Goose is perfect, as it will help us ramp into a turn 3 Vicious Return, and also gives us a creature we don't mind sacrificing once we used up that first food token. Then we've got the full playset of Mire Triton as a 2-1 zombie merfolk with death touch that when it enters the battlefield mills two cards and we gain two life, so we can potentially put some of those expensive creatures in our graveyard. And then we've got the Immersturm Raider, a 2-1 that when it enters the battlefield we may discard a card and if we do draw a card. So that's another way to get those expensive creatures in the graveyard. And finally we have two copies of Pestilent Cauldron and we can even cast Restorative Burst in this deck, a 5 mana sorcery that returns up to two target creature, land and or planeswalker cards from our graveyard to our hand and each player gains for life. Or we can cast Pestilent Cauldron, a 3 mana artifact that can tap and discard a card to generate a 1-1 pest token. So that's a perfect way to discard our expensive creatures. And then the second ability we're not going to use too often, but the last ability for 4 mana we can tap it and exile 4 target cards from a single graveyard to draw a card can also come up, especially with the self mill from Mire Triton. And then going over the mana base, we've got all 12 pathways in our colors, alongside 4 Temple of Malice, which lets us cry 1, enters battlefield tapped, and 2 copies of Temple of Malady, and then 4 Basic Forests, which in combination with the pathways gives us 12 untapped green sources for a turn 1 Gilded Goose, and 1 Basic Swamp, and 1 Basic Mountain. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. 
and our hand is just missing an expensive creature to discard to Vicious Return. Can sacrifice a goose and ramp into a turn 3 return. So I'll try it. And Fierce Empath would also be an excellent draw. And there we go. So we're off to the races. So turn 2, probably just play Goose. And then I can play the Empath before playing the Vicious Return. So... Play a Goose and Pass. Opponent on Blue Red Snow. Expressive Iteration. So this might be a Dragon deck. Which can have a few counter spells. Luckily we drew a second Vicious Return. So we have a bit of redundancy. Gonna see Frostbite take out one Goose. Titanothorex, something we can also discard to Vicious Return. So I don't actually mind casting it now to make sure it resolves, and that will guarantee at the very least a Titanothorex in a few turns. So I wouldn't be sacrificing anything to deal three, since there's nothing worth killing. Now if they might have some bounce spells to either bounce the return or whichever creature I reanimate. So that's still potentially a concern. Opponent passes. Each player discards a card. We'll discard Titanothorax. And then now the question is, do we play Empath or another Return? I think we gotta play the Empath first. So let's see if there's a response to Gilded Goose. There is not. can also just get a 6 drop to hard cast next turn instead of uh, getting an expensive creature to reanimate. So we have some flexibility here. Sadly don't have an uncounterable creature to search up, like maybe the uh, Crankplate Baloth, which also would have been a reasonable inclusion. Could get a Bookworm, which we can at least get back out of our graveyard and is also fine reanimating. Or we can try to hard cast the Burning Rune Demon, which is most likely then getting countered. But at the very least, the Burning Rune Demon, if we reanimate it, provides a bit of value, even if they bounce it. Unlike some of our other creatures like Titanothrax. So I'll go with the Demon. And then pass a turn. So next turn we could hard cast our Demon, we could play a Vicious Return. We'll see. Frostbite and another goose. So we'll need a land to cast a demon now. Opponent passes. Alright, so at the very least they can't bounce my titan and counter my demon since they only have double blue. So opponent takes it all. So they're most likely keeping up a counter spell. So do I want my Burning Rune Demon getting countered or Vicious Return getting countered? I think I prefer Vicious Return getting countered at this point. And if it resolves I can deal 3 to my opponent as well. Alright, gets negated. Not necessarily the counter spell I was expecting. But that's alright. And then... We'll see how they handled the Titanothorax here. Blue Rat doesn't have any removal spells necessarily to kill the Titanoth, but they might have bounce spells to manage it. Okay, teach by example, gonna copy their next spell. Which is... Cathartic Reunion, so they're gonna get to draw a lot of cards, but... At 7 life, they will need to go Island into a bounce spell which doesn't appear to be the case. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. 
Just missing a discard outlet, so that's what we'll be looking for. And an Immerstorm Raider is perfect here. So the plan now is going to be Fierce Empath, find a creature to reanimate, then discard it with Raider, and then reanimate it with Return Upon the Tide. So sequencing is going to be a little tricky. Might kick things off with Gilded Goose to ensure that we can cast Fierce Empath on the following turn. And then Empath into Raider as our opponent on a blue-green snow deck. Yeah, we'll play the Empath. Against blue-green snow, what's the best creature to reanimate? They could have some uh, fight spells in the form of Blizzard Brawl to take out Belladros. So I'm kind of leaning towards Titanothorax as just the biggest creature. Uh, Massacre Worm could kill Sculptor, but might be a little small. Although blue-green snow might have some more small creatures like the 1-2 that provides card advantage. Hard to say here. I think I'll go with Titanothorax. Play Temple and then land is fine. Now we also have the flexibility of cycling the Rex and discarding something else with Raider. Our opponent is just ramping. Hits us for two. So this turn I can play a Raider or I can cycle Rex and Fertile Return upon the Tide to then cast it next turn. Yeah, I guess cycling the Rex is maybe slightly better here. Since we might not need to keep another goose in hand. There's Spirit of the Elder Guard. One of the reasons why Massacre Worm might not have been great since the spirit can pretty easily trade off for it. And the frost auger was the creature I mentioned earlier as well. Would have died to a worm, so yeah it's not easy to decide which creature to reanimate in any given matchup. Cardor's Vicious Returns, not bad. So we have some options. I could attack with Empath. If they block with the Spirit, I can finish it off with Vicious Return by sacrificing a Goose. Yeah, I kind of like that for starters. If they block with Frost Augur, it's unfortunate, but we'll see. Opponent just takes it. So now I could Vicious Return killing Augur, or I can just bring back Titanothrex, which seems better. And then do I want to play the goose? Um, sure. So we've got a Rex in play. And hopefully they don't have a second Spirit of the Elder Guard since then they can trade off. Sculptor Winter, good combo with Wolf Willow Haven as well, as they can make double mana. So, also could have been a reason to kill the Sculptor here. Frost Augur finds another spirit for free. They might get a Faceless Haven at some point too. Just another forest for now. Well, at least they can Blizzard Brawl kill Titanothorex. Opponent passes, drew another Titanothorex. So we'll attack with the Rex, and then if they block with both spirits, we can just uh, reanimate it with another Return Upon the Tide. Don't think Fierce Empath should be attacking anymore. 
Put on takes it. Okay. So I'm one mana short of cycling Rex and reanimating it with return. So I guess we just cast a Carter's Vicious Return, sacrificing one Gilded Goose. This might get countered, does not. I guess I can also sacrifice Empath. And then Frost is annoying, but I think Sculpture might be the bigger threat, as that can maybe ramp out something big next turn. And then I'll pass with the plan of maybe cycling another Titanothorax and returning it next turn. So we could be dead to double Blizzard Brawl on my geese. Frost Augur misses. Another Haven. That's fine. Opponent passes. And uh, do I want to waste a food to cycle Titanothorax? Yeah, I think it's fine. Although we can just discard it to Vicious Return as well. And then we can return it this very same turn. After attacking, if I cast Raider discarding lands, I'm not guaranteed to be able to cast return. So we'll attack. Probably see a double block. Trample over for three. And then we can reanimate one Rex and next turn Fish's return will be able to bring the second one back as well. Alright, and our opponent explodes. Double Titan Author X is going to be too much to handle. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand seems pretty decent. We'll have to draw a few extra lands along the way. Postpone our decision on the pathway since we need both black and red. Alright, so... Feels like I'm playing the Raider here. And then... I guess turn one mountain. Would I rather discard Demon or Massacre Worm? Massacre Worm is going to be more difficult to hard cast. So I think we uh, discard Worm, keep Demon. Could see a removal spell on the Raider. As we draw another one. Alright, so I guess we can also discard our Demon. Still hoping to draw a land. Alright, so I have to decide between Raider, Goose, and Foretelling Return Upon the Tide. It's probably one of the creatures. And while Goose is kind of like playing a land, it still doesn't allow me to reanimate anything on the following turn, so then I would rather just hit my land drops. All right, perfect. So I can play this as a green source and play the goose. And then if I draw lands next turn, I could already reanimate. So that seems worth it, even though if they kill my goose, I won't have any black mana. It's a risk reward. Not like the cauldron's going to do much for me with only two cards in graveyard. Veteran pumps Youthful Knights, no point in uh, blocking it. And the Rimrock Knights, gonna add two power. Alright, we drew a land, sadly it's a tapped one, so no reanimated creature just yet. But uh, Massacre Worm next turn is looking quite powerful. And land would let me reanimate with Unbreakable Bonds. Um, yeah, I guess it's fine. If they kill my goose, I'll have the option to use Unbreakable Bond instead of Return Upon the Tide. Opponent attacks. So the reason to block Veteran with the Raider is if they were to play another Veteran, although they probably would have played that pre-combat. They probably have a combat trick, but I'm fine baiting it out. 
So I'll just single block, even though Massacre Worm would technically kill Veteran next turn. Alright, Scorching Dragonfire kills Raider. At least we prevented two damage. So Massacre Worm is looking like our best option. And the best part is that our opponent doesn't even know for a fact that we're planning to reanimate Worm. Well, they, they could have a sneaking suspicion. So, lots of breakable bonds. Bring back Worm. And wipe the opponent's board. And hit for two. Now, Worm has lifelink, but the ability, of course, doesn't deal damage. It's life loss, so that doesn't translate into life gain with lifelink. Pacifism will prevent the worm from attacking, but the ability still persists. And now we can return upon the tide the demon, which will get maybe a Cardor's Vicious Return, Kogla. What else is good? Yeah, Kogla seems pretty great. And then. Opponent has already seen enough here. Yeah, we had enough mana to just hard cast one of our six drops thanks to the Gilded Goose. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. We've got a reanimation spell or discard outlets and our creature to reanimate. So, do I need a fierce empath? I think I'd rather dig towards extra lands, even though empath could give me more choice on what to potentially discard. Put on black white with a cleric of life's bond. Alrighty, so this turn probably play raider, discarding Kogla, and next turn I can foretell return upon the tide. So in the meantime, we have a creature that can attack and block. Titanothrax, another nice reanimation target. And we have two reanimation spells, so good chance that will reanimate both. Cleric Rose hits me for three. And yeah, we need a land here untapped, preferably. That'll do. So step one, reanimate Kogla. And then step two is eventually going to be Titanothrax. Starnheim Aspirants, discounting future angels. So what should I kill with Kogla? Valkyrie is probably the scariest creature right now. So we'll go with the Valkyrie here. And hit for two. Can even give Kogla a trample next turn with Titanothorax. And if I'm not gonna hit my land drop, I could also use the Raider. Right, Bounding Gold prevents Kogla from blocking. So, not leaving back the Raider could come back to haunt us a little bit. So I can Vicious Return, sacrificing Kogla to kill the Aspirants. And then in a few turns, we'll get Kogla back. I can chum block with a raider in the meantime. The alternative would be probably cycle Rex, play raider, and then we have two draws towards a land for Unbreakable Bond next turn. So step one, raider, probably discarding Pestilent Cauldron at this point, although the life gain from Restorative Burst could also come in handy. But hard casting a demon's also potentially useful. So I think I still discard Cauldron. Found our lanes. And uh, yeah, we'll pass. Can cycle Rex and then bring it back next turn. Cycling the Rex first, also reasonable in case we found the worst cards that we could discard. So the clerics grow. Fine trading for the Aspirants. 
jump. And I don't think we have any ways of destroying the Bounding Golds without Kogla. Get back Rex and hope the opponent doesn't have an answer for it. It does have lifelink, so an all-out attack is not going to kill us. Youthful Valkyrie we can take out with Vicious Return. Although at this point we might be better off just killing the Cleric of Life's Bond. And then attacking with the Titanothrax to gain a bunch of life, keeping the Raider on defense. So we're back to 16. Next turn, Discard Bookworm. Another Bounding Gold, a turn late here. Probably trade for... Hmm, at this point they have 5 mana. I guess we'll trade for the Expedition Healer. Alright, so... No longer have our Titanothrax to attack with. And yeah, we didn't draw a land, so... Could be in a bit of trouble still. So I could play another Vicious Return, killing, let's say, the Aspirant, and then play Goose as a chum blocker for Cleric. Although next turn I'll get a Hasty Kogla, which can free the Titanothrax. So I think we're better off going Mar Triton plus Goose, and then Triton, naturally a good blocker for the Cleric on the ground. Can always sacrifice our food token to gain three if needed. And it also helps us hard cast Burning Rune Demon. So I think we'll be okay here. Judge of Valor shows up. And grows the Cleric. And the Youthful Valkyrie. So all in all, not a bad draw. Probably going to be the target of Kogla. Aspirant and Valkyrie attack. I'll take four. Bring back Kogla. Judge of Valor down. Kogla attacks, freeing Titanothrax. And we can still play Burning Rune Demon. What does Burning Rune Demon get? Probably our two reanimation spells, although I guess we've already cast a lifelink one. So return upon the tide, plus maybe just a good creature we can hard cast, like uh, Belladros Witherbloom, which I'm pretty close to casting if I draw another land. So when mine's crying into a land. Return upon the tide also works. Can bring back Bookworm. Shadow Sage almost does it here. Can deal three to me. But luckily we've got a flying blocker. And Titanothrax is going to gain 11 here, so... That should do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand is missing a big creature to reanimate, but we've got everything else we need. So I'll try it. And then Raider also gives us an extra draw step towards one of those. Opponent with a turn one Fabled Passage, and uh, yeah, I guess Meyer Triton might be better than Raider, as it just uh, has a chance of milling something good. And then if they present a target for Vicious Return to deal three damage, even better. 
Right, and did not mill any powerful creatures, unfortunately. Masked Vandal, just a 1 3. So, I think the plan is play a raider discarding another raider, and then play an extra goose, and wait on uh, Vicious Return for now. So. Picked up another Vicious Return. This might also be a case where we trade off Meyer Triton with the plan of reanimating it. And then getting back Meyer Triton can maybe get something good in the graveyard. So there might be a party deck as we see Lemvala. Perfect target for Vicious Return. So... I may or may not want to play my land. I guess it's fine to do so. And then we'll sacrifice the raider to take out Limvala. They'll probably make their creatures indestructible, so I wouldn't be able to attack with Mar Triton. Pass a turn. Back up Linvala, also gonna meet the same fate here. Sample we will discard. Maybe I should attack first with a Triton. Since they didn't seem to be willing to trade for Vandal. And then I'll just sacrifice a goose. As the shapeshifter is valuable when providing different creature types. So could have done that uh, previous turn as well to get into extra damage. Still gonna sacrifice goose I think over triton. Although as we mentioned if we sacrifice a triton it can maybe mill some goodies for the second vicious return. Whereas right now we're bringing back an Immerstorm Raider. So I actually don't mind sacrificing the Triton to kill Limvala. Still a bit more threatening than the Mass Vandal. Alright, so next turn we get back a Triton. We'll also get a plus one counter, so wouldn't be able to trade for the Vandal anymore. Nimble Trap Finder is acceptable. And then get back Triton. And yeah, we milled the Titanothrax, so can bring that back next turn. Opponent in the meantime discarded a veteran adventurer. And yeah, opponent packs it in, they know about Titanothrax coming back next turn and it's going to be too much for their deck to handle, presumably doesn't have much removal for it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, our hand seems totally fine, we've got a bit of ramp to play turn 3, Vicious Return and a Bookworm to and discard to it. Facing Clever Lumimancer, so an aggressive Magecrafted deck. So, given that we drew another untapped land, we can go Goose into maybe a turn 2 Raider to give us an extra blocker. And maybe we prefer sacrificing the Raider to the return as opposed to the Goose. Another Lumimancer is scary. No point in blocking. Alright, opponent's got the Defiant Strike. Take 3. Titanothrax is interesting. I think Bookworm might still be the better creature to reanimate, but for now, I guess we can play Raider and discard Bookworm. Fierce Empath can also maybe 
get a Massacre Worm to then discard, but then I'll have to wait an extra turn on Vicious Return. And with a tap land, that's going to be a little awkward. Opponent foretells a card. Alright, wasn't expecting that. Probably still okay to play the return. And then reanimating a bookworm is still pretty strong. Although we can also decide to discard Titanothrex. And now I'll probably just sacrifice the goose. And hit for two since I'm not planning to block. Mire Triton gives us an extra blocker on the ground. Light Scribe's definitely the creature I would have preferred to take out. So I'll discard Rex. Opponent discards Mavinda. So what could they have foretold? Maybe a Chaos Onslaught? I guess that makes sense. So this turn... Go for Triton plus Temple. And don't need Raider. Although it is a way to eventually discard whatever I search up with Empath, but we're pretty close to just hard casting a 6-drop as well. And I'll attack since, again, the Raider's not going to be a reliable blocker once they enable Magecraft. So if they have a Chaos Onslaught, they're probably going to use it to get past my Mara Triton with the Light Scribe. But I'm still happy to kind of force the issue here. Find us one instead. Alright, also makes sense. And do we see a Chaos Onslaught? Opponent's thinking about it, but decides against it. Well, we can reanimate both creatures, and then I would rather have a hasty Titanothrex. And a uh, Bookworm on defense. And then I don't think I attack with Raider. Keep us an extra blocker back, since Chaos Onslaught represents a lot of damage with all those Magecraft creatures. And then return the Worm. Alright, not bad. Turn 5, and we reanimate it. A total of, let's see, 8 plus 9, 17 mana worth of creatures. 12 power, good in the red zone already. Both our creatures trample, so it's going to be difficult for them to uh, deal 18 damage here. And yeah, there's the Chaos Onslaught, as expected. So we've got a double striking Lumimancer. White's not going to have any ways to give Trample, so I'm not too worried about it. And our opponent explodes. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that's just missing a discard outlet. But we've got a Temple to Scry, so we've got a few looks at a Vicious Return or a Cauldron or Immerstrom Raider, so... We'll keep. Lands could be okay, but really need that uh, discard outlet. Alright, probably fine to foretell. And then wait on Temple, although Temple also lets me play Empath. Although shuffling with Empath also has its drawbacks. Mar Triton could mill something juicy. So don't mind keeping that on top. It's not a surefire thing, but it also gives us an intermediate play. Alright, and there's a Titanothrex and Vicious Return. Return also would have been a good draw, but happy with the Rex in our graveyard. Up against Black Red, so they might have their own graveyard synergies. And Woe Strider points towards a Sacrifice deck. If they have an Akroan War to steal my Titanothrex, we'll be pretty sad. For now, probably go for Double Fortel. Could also play Empath to get a 6-drop. And then we can return for 5 mana and potentially play 6-drop on turn 6. And then which 6-drop should that be? Massacre Worm looks decent on this board. 
could get a Burning Rune Demon as well, which can get two more reanimation spells. Let's go with the Massacre Worm. And that might also incentivize the opponent in uh, sacrificing the goat as soon as possible. I'm happy trading my Triton. Opponent takes two. So I'll need the triple black. And then step one, I guess, attack with Mara Triton. And in our second main phase, we can bring back our Rex. And if they just kill it, we can reanimate it once again. So that's not a problem. Put on chumps with a goat. Could see village rights before damage. Put on draws two. And bring back our dinosaur. Alright, so Crone War would be the worst case scenario here. Opponent stealing our Titanothrex and potentially hitting us once. Any untapped lands gives us access to Massacre Worm. And if they remove the Rex, we can still bring it back, so... Our next couple turns are planned out. It's going to be a tentative connection instead. Alright, that's even worse than in a Chrome War, as they can hit us right away. And then we'll take the damage from Strider. And then they can either Village Rights again or just sacrifice to the Strider. So we're at 8. And another Village Rights to draw 2. Yeah. It's been a rough start. At least Massacre Worm kills West Rider. And then we'll just hit with a Triton, keep the Empath on defense in case they have another Act of Treason effect we can chum block. At least with the West Rider gone, it's less likely that they can also sacrifice whichever creature they steal. Alright, point is just gonna Blood Chief's Thirst kill the Worm. And a Stormfist Crusader. Another return to draw. So we'll bring back probably the Massacre Worm, kill the Crusader, which can enable some of the opponent's mana synergies, like the Tentative Connection for one mana. And make the same play as last turn. Our opponent's at 10 life. And another Blood Chief's Thirst on the Worm. And the Halbonder giving creatures super menace. And yeah, we're gonna make the same play yet again. Bring back Massacre Worm. Kill the Halbonder. Attack for two. And we can foretell another return upon the tide. So the decision to grab Massacre Worm definitely paid off. Although, Burning Rune Demon also could have been effective. Zagras, Thief of Heartbeats. 4-4, four, four, Flying Haste and Death Touch. Puts us to 4. If they have a Fling, we're dead. It's gonna be a Labyrinth Raptor on defense instead. So... I think we can kill the opponent here, since Fierce Empath can get Another Titanothrax to give the Massacre Worm Trample. So pretty cool synergy here too. Opponent's forced to block the Worm. And they would technically survive at one, but... The Trample counter coming into play. Alright, sweet. So very close game against the Black Reds, Manus, Steel and Sacrifice deck. Alright, so we get to see our Junt Reanimator deck in action, and this isn't really meant to be a very competitive deck, we also didn't face any tier 1 standard decks today, but still capable of doing some powerful things. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.